gonna have a little gardening time. I'm about to use a T-Post pounder to get that in there, which is just that red guy with the sleeve on it. I've got my ladder to help me get up high. So I'm gonna have at least three, but I bought enough to have four posts total. And then I'm gonna string wire in between them so that I can get things like zucchini and squash to grow up tall instead of out into the yard. Next, I'm gonna figure out a way to fix this two x four in the center one, as well as, this is a used two x four, so I need to get some nails out of it. And then, of course, I'll add some more two x four on the two longer lengths, but I thought I'd start in the middle where it was a little bit shorter. So this is what I've designed. This little spot is what the post will come up through. And then this whole area will get evacuated and this is going to basically be a lap joint for the other 2x4 to sit on. Because I want this to mate with the other one, I'm going to remove the bulk of the material in this one. That way I'll have more or less a flat joint along the top. Always start the jigsaw with the base plate firmly touching. You'll notice that the cross cut is a way faster cut with the blade that I have on than when I go with the, with the grain, and that's called a rip cut. Because this isn't a repurposed piece of wood, I went ahead and bought cedar for this because it's a better outdoor wood. A quick tour. So this end looks great. I like how flush my joint is, like good contact throughout. I know it's not perfect, but I don't need perfect for a garden project. This one, however, is quite a bit off. So I'm gonna actually take these off and pound this down just a tad bit so that I can get it to set with more contact. And then here, great. It's okay that I have a bit more of a bulky part right there. It's just what worked out lengthwise. So I just gave this post a few taps. I got it looking better. I'm thinking about not moving it anymore because as I set this down more, it of course changes the angle of what's over here. And I don't want to monkey with it too much. I'm going to call that good enough for a garden project. The first one I did off camera, so I drilled it. And the second one I'm going to do right there. You can hear my naughty dog in the background, little primrose. And this piece had a big split in it. I'm just going to ignore it. It's the wood I got. It's coronavirus time, and it's what got delivered to me. After the hole is drilled, you measure the wire. I'm just measuring it by holding it out. And then I'm about to cut it where my thumbs are at. So now I have the wire passed through the board and one section passed through the fence post. And then I'm gonna treat it like a twisty tie on a bread bag. So I'm just gonna get it going enough that it's hooked. And then I can grab my pliers and just start working it from there. 
Obviously, if I wasn't doing it with just one hand, I could have started that twisty a little closer. And I'm going to call that about good. And I'm going to get that so it doesn't hit me in the face. Here's what happens when you over tighten the wire. It will snap. I'll take a closer note next time. I'm now working on securing the next section of post to the rail. And I'm just using a measurement that's on my hand. So I'm going to go about middle of palm from the front of my fingertips. Pretty easy. Middle of palm. Yep, did it. So for everything, I'm just using some 14 gauge wire which is strong enough, but not impossible to hand tighten out the wire. I want to give full credit to the author in the book that is teaching me how to do straw bale gardening. So Joel and his book is Straw Bale Gardens Complete. And I'm not doing it precise, but it gave me a good enough idea of how to do this. And next I'm going to jump into putting all of those cross member wires to grow the squash and zucchini. The next part that I'm going to show you how to do is, is how I'm stringing the wire. So I'm in general aiming roughly 10 inches apart, but it's going to be a little bit more than 10 inches between here and two up, but I'm going with it. My first step is, is to tweak this a little bit, as you just saw me do so that the wire can fit in there. Then I just simply place the wire down in the bottom and I'm giving it a baby tap just to hold it enough. And I'm just gonna put a little fold in here so that I can put a lot of tension on this far side. And let's do this. What I'm going to do now is really snug this up. So, here we go. With all my strength right there, and I'm just twisting around. Put us, and now I'm going to string it the other direction. See how that held with nothing there? Get all the slack out of the spool. Use it to pull tension. You can see how hard I'm pulling. Do a full wrap. And I'm going to cut it. Still has great tension. I'm simply going to take the two loose ends and twisty tie them off. Okay. Now I'm just going to bonk them out of the way. You can make up your own way of doing it, but that was super simple. I ran out of 14 gauge wire. I didn't order near enough. Got a little less than halfway done, but that's okay. Um, the main thing is, is I got my bottom one, which is the ones that are needed first, and the bottom one is where I can also start draping over plastic to create a little greenhouse for my fragile little new start. So I got what I need. I can place an order for the rest of the wire. And now I'm going to move on to um, getting some fertilizer deeper down into the bales so I'm easily able to tap a garden stake in. And then I'm going to use a little tube to pour some um, fertilizers. So I'm going to use both blood meal as well as bone meal. So both organic products. Here it is up close. Urban is inspecting. Just 
just trying to get some stuff more down in the bale rather than everything just being on the top. I did take some time to pound in some garden sticks. This is a good example of one being nice and snug, that one as well. And this is to help it where I'm kind of slowly blobbing out um, as it loses its structure, as it de decomposes. This one's too tall, so I'll just take my jigsaw, cut that off. Um, I have been using uh, two layers, so two bags inside each other of just brown paper bags. I tried newspaper out here, and that's just become a mess. So I'm stopping the garden stakes until I get more groceries slash more paper bags. I'm going to walk you through planting some of my transplants. So my next round is broccoli. I'm using my awesome book to let me know exactly how often I can plant them. So broccoli says that they need to be that far apart, but a short hand answer is five of them per bale. So I'm gonna do that. I'll give you a, a bird's eye view of what it's like to dig in to this uh, straw bale. And I'm also using the leftover stuff that I'm pulling out. I have some big planters that I'm gonna probably put on the side where these posts are. And that's where my tomatoes and whatnot will probably end up going. So it's kind of filling in this so I don't have to put a ton of dirt in there. and urban my garden helpers pretty jazzed on this got a few open spots that will go for things that I just planted and some little I don't know what they call them trays 